leading the way. You're watching KNBC 9 News on KCWE. Filtered sunshine right now, but clouds are on the increase, and that means a chance of rain can't be that far behind. A wet forecast for the rest of the work week straight ahead. On his first trip to Asia as commander in chief, President Biden is once again making waves for comments about Taiwan that are generating a strong response from China. But the White House is saying right now. And today, seniors at Truman High School got to take a walk down memory lane. Why the Legacy Walk is important not only for graduates, but for elementary kids, too. Well, thanks so much for joining us at noon on this Monday. I'm Jamie Weiss. We want to go ahead and start off with a forecast with Chief Meteorologist Brian Busby. Brian, it's a beautiful day right now, but you say rain chances in the forecast. Yeah, rain is on the increase and also many amounts could be over an inch or two, depending on where you're located. Right now, we have filtered sunshine at best with temperatures in the 60s, 63 degrees Tonganoxie, Smithfield 66, officially 65 in Kansas City, a good bubble of warmer air, if you will, but the trouble is this is still below average for this time of year. There is some cooler stuff out to the west. Some of that is rain cooled air. Some of it is just a different air mass. Here's a look at first alert clouds and radar. Here come the clouds on the increase, especially to the west and southwest. But I think for this evening, you don't necessarily need to bog yourself down with an umbrella. Later on tonight, though, we're going to see chances of rain increase. According to first alert future scan, we'll see that rain starting to come on our western doorstep as late as, say, our 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock news later on tonight and then during the early morning hours still a wet day expected on your Tuesday into Wednesday with several periods of rain expected then. So if we have to put probabilities on it, the heaviest rain anywhere between one to two, some areas getting two to three inches, flooding a concern on smaller roads and creeks and also those rivers as well. We'll take a better deep dive into future scan coming up later during this half hour. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks, Brian. In our top story this afternoon, for the second time in eight months, President Biden says the U.S. would use its military to defend Taiwan if China were to attack, which appears to be a departure from longstanding U.S. policy. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington with what the White House is saying right now. In Japan, President Biden's making news during his high-stakes Asia trip after making these remarks about Taiwan. Are you willing to get involved militarily to defend Taiwan if it comes to that? Yes. You are? That's the commitment we made. The president suggesting U.S. armed forces could be called in to defend Taiwan from Chinese aggression. We agree with the one China policy. We signed on to it. But the idea that that it can be taken by force, just taken by force, is just not is just not appropriate. The president made similar comments last October that also sparked controversy. Today, President Biden insisting the repercussions of not aiding Taiwan could lead to a situation similar to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Former Central Intelligence Agency Director David Petraeus saying on CNN, Biden's words appear to harden current U.S. policy. It's also obviously a much uh, more forward leaning uh, than the strategic ambiguity that has characterized the policy for well over four decades. The White House tried to clarify Biden's comment, saying the president only reiterated the U.S.'s ongoing commitment to provide Taiwan with military means to defend itself. China's foreign ministry responding urging the U.S. to abide by its one China principle and to not underestimate China's ability to defend itself, adding that it considers Taiwan a Chinese territory and won't allow other nations to interfere in its domestic affairs. When asked if he wanted to clarify his remarks on the U.S. defending Taiwan, the president refused. Taiwan's foreign ministry expressing gratitude for President Biden's, quote, rock-solid commitment to Taiwan. Back here closer to home, Kansas City, Missouri police are searching for a shooter after a murder on the city's east side. This happened around 2 o'clock yesterday at East 79th Terrace and Campbell Street. Police tell us a man was walking to someone in a car when someone started shooting, then quickly drove off. There's no suspect information this afternoon. Police tell us a Kansas City man shot and killed his wife right outside of their station while a four-year-old girl was inside the car. According to county prosecutors, Elliot Nevels shot his wife, Christina Nevels, in her car just across the street from Central Patrol. The car crashed shortly after into a nearby apartment parking lot. That four-year-old inside of the back seat is okay this afternoon. 
Elliott is now facing murder charges. Kansas City is changing a law following a lawsuit connected to the 2020 George Floyd protest. It's called a failure to obey law. Now it's legal for people to stand and watch or record police officers just as long as you don't get in the way of them doing their job. This change comes after three women settled a federal lawsuit after they were arrested back in 2020. The suit says they failed to obey, but they weren't committing any other crimes. Sentencing is the next step for two Missouri women who admit to being inside of the Capitol on January 6th. The two, who are both from Springfield, Missouri, pled guilty to misdemeanor charges. They say they were inside of the U.S. Capitol for 12 minutes during the insurrection. So far, 22 Missourians have been charged with participating in the riot. 13 of them have pled guilty. We do have a traffic alert for Leewood drivers. A five month long construction project starts today. Lee Boulevard from 83rd Street to Somerset Drive is going to be closed to help widen the road, add some bike lanes and do some sewer work. The area should be back open by the end of October. Today, MoDOT wants to hear from you about how to improve Highway 69 in Clay Como. They're hosting a listening session tonight from 5 to 7 at the Clay Como City Hall. You will be able to get a closer look at the plans to help make the area safer for folks walking alongside the road. That project is scheduled to start in October. Today, two KCK high schools are going to be celebrating their seniors' great success. Students from Sumner Academy and FL Schlangley graduate today inside of Memorial Hall. The first ceremony starts at 5.30, the second's at 8 o'clock. There will also be a live stream if you're not able to attend in person. A big treat this morning for elementary school students and independents. KMBC 9's Martin Augustine shows us the legacy walk and why it's not just for the younger kids. Here at Santa Fe Trail Elementary, the Independent School District is restarting a longtime tradition. Take a look at this. The students of Santa Fe Trail lining the hallways and applauding and cheering and staring at the graduating seniors from Truman High School. Those little kids looking up to these big kids as to where they're going to be someday. Those big kids looking down at the little ones just to look to see where they've come from. They did high fives. They hugged kids. They greeted old teachers that they haven't seen in a long time. One of those seniors we spoke with talked to us about how important it is to do this for those younger kids. For me it'd be like setting an example for a little kids like all right once once you get older at one point you're gonna graduate you're gonna go and through go through all the same things that we did you're gonna make sacrifices but it'll work out on the end if you just keep pushing through it. This is happening at the elementary schools across the independent school district this week. This tradition we mentioned has been restarted because it had to be shut down for COVID. This is the first year back. Reporting from Independence, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. Well, two graduates in Grandview aren't wasting any time getting into the workforce. As high school seniors, they've landed high paying manufacturing jobs. This is the first time the Kansas City National Security Campus has hired high school graduates with no prior experience. Two students have already signed on and more offers are out. They hope to continue this work. Want to turn to our first alert weather. People in the small northern Michigan town of Gaylord will begin to rebuild today after a tornado tore through their homes. Two people were killed in this storm and 44 more were sent to the hospital. This was the city's first tornado ever in recorded history. Neighbors haven't wasted any time jumping in to help. We're just trying to figure out the best way to get our community out to help. The church has kind of become the staging spot. People that don't have a place to stay right now need help, need a shower, need laundry, whatever they can come right here. The governor issued a declaration of emergency for the state to help get extra money and resources. We want to focus on the weather here at home because, Brian, you say we are tracking the potential for strong storms overnight. It uh, looks like more storms are going to drop some potentially heavy rainfall. I don't think we have to worry about damaging winds or damaging hail or anything like what they have up in, um, say, what's happening in Michigan. Temperature wise, setting the stage 65 in Kansas City, 63 in Hiawatha. Warmer air over us. Our storm system is gathering strength out to the west, as Jamie was talking about. Again, I think the setup is going to be a little farther to our south as far as the severe weather is concerned. But because there's a lot of moisture being drawn up from the Gulf of Mexico, that will illustrate the point that I think we could see some flooding concerns. Some areas picking up decent amounts of rain that are going to be out there. First alert future scan on the timing. It'll probably be later on tonight, more likely closer to midnight and thereafter. We're going to see those heavier amounts of rain that will be moving in. So for the rest of this evening, partly cloudy, really not too bad. Cooler than normal. 66, get those umbrellas out later on tonight if you're working the midnight shift and definitely tomorrow. We'll see that a little once again. Another look at first alert future scan closer in coming up in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Brian. Next at noon, we'll hear from a former Marine who was just released from a Russian prison as part of a trade. Here, what
why he made the decision early to spend most of his time in prison in solitary confinement. Skilled rescue crews were able to save a man standing alongside the side of a cliff at nearly a thousand feet in the air. They say he nearly made a fatal mistake. We'll show you how they were able to get him to solid ground. Imported baby formula is now arriving in the U.S. Military planes brought in the first batch this weekend, and there's more headed this way. This is one state declares a state of emergency to prevent price gouging. Stay connected with the facts that will move us forward. You're watching KNBC 9 News, leading the way. Today, for the first time since his release from a Russian prison, former U.S. Marine Trevor Reed is talking about the three years he spent behind bars, including how he spent his time in solitary confinement. He did have the option of getting out by doing manual labor, but Reed says that was never an option for him. I decided right away that I was never going to be part of that process. They were not going to make one ruble off of me, and whatever punishment I received for that, it was worth it to me. I didn't care. If you'd like to hear more, you can watch ABC's special report, 985 Days, the Trevor Reed interview that airs tonight at 730 on KMBC 9. A daring rescue on the West Coast. The California Highway Patrol saved a man who was stuck halfway down a 500 foot cliff near San Francisco. A fisherman spotted the man and called police, but the rescue work that followed was very tricky. Strong winds and where the man was on the cliff made it especially challenging. One wrong move nearly cost him his life. He, he actually grabbed onto me, which uh, is a very dangerous thing he did, because um, if I were to have swung um, away from him, he could have potentially fallen off the cliffs. 
just a scary video to watch here. Rescue crews were eventually able to get him into this harness and back onto the ground safely. Here's the amazing news. He only had a few scrapes and bruises. They're still not sure how he ended up on the cliff. Now we want to turn to the latest on the baby formula shortage. The first military flight from Europe carrying nearly 80,000 pounds of formula has now arrived in the US. ABC's Ariel Reshef has the latest. The first sign of relief for families facing the urgent nationwide formula shortage. Planes packed with baby formula landing in Indianapolis from Switzerland, part of the Biden administration's Operation Fly Formula. It's going to be delivered in hospitals and uh, home health care clinics all across uh, the country. This shipment provides enough formula uh, to take care of 9,000 babies and 18,000 toddlers uh, for a week. Those deliveries expected in a matter of days, bound for children with the highest need, initially offered by prescription only. But it will barely scratch the surface of the dire nationwide need. Ten states and Washington, D.C., reporting more than half of their supply is gone. The White House also announcing the first two authorizations under the Defense Production Act to increase supply. Abbott Nutrition, the largest U.S. manufacturer of formula, and the maker of the popular brand Enfamil now receiving priority for crucial materials and products needed to produce more formula. Four babies in South Carolina, the latest children recently hospitalized as a result of the shortage. Three of them after their parents were forced to switch them to a different brand. One after their caregiver attempted to mix their own formula. It's very concerning and if we continue down this path, we're going to see more and more infants who are going to need specialized medical care because of it. For new parents like Emily and Mac Jaynard of Richland, Washington, whose baby Mackenzie was born three months premature, a restock of specialized formula can't come soon enough. You can't afford a couple of weeks of uh, light feedings or rejecting your food because that could be a real, real quick ticket to the hospital. A second round of formula is expected to land outside of Washington, D.C. later this week. The head of the USDA says he expects the crisis will ease within the next 30 days, but still many questions remain about whether action should have been taken much sooner. A new project dedicated to veterans. You'll find the tomb of the unknown soldier Never Forget Garden in Overland Park. This is off West 75th Street. It's meant to recognize and remember all past, present and future vets and honor their sacrifice. I think the love, the, the aspect that our veterans deserve so much and so much respect, so much remembrance and we're doing that. And this garden has such great visibility that hopefully the community also will learn about it. It's an educational piece too. And learn what these men and women have given. This is phase one of the project. Organizers expect to add plaques and signs in the fall. KBC9 took a closer look at the unknown soldier from World War I who's buried in Arlington. You can watch our chronicle Known But to God on our website, KBC.com, or on our YouTube page. CVS hopes to add more team members at a hiring event today. Interviews are happening from 3 to 5 at the distribution center near Northwest 108th Street and Congress Avenue in Casey Mo. They're hoping to find a range of different jobs to fill, so good luck if you are applying. The city of Merriam is hoping to help monarch butterflies today. They are giving out milkweed seeds at City Hall, which is a monarch's favorite plant. This is all part of the mayor's monarch's pledge through the National Wildlife Federation. There are still a few spots left in the Lenexa Youth Police Academy. Teens are able to interact with police officers and learn what it takes to be a cop. It's free to sign up and lunch is provided every day. The first session is June 6th through the 10th and then another the week later, June 13th through the 17th. You can sign up on the city's website. 1218 on your Monday. Let's get another check of the forecast because Brian, tomorrow is an impact day. What do we need to know? We need to know that we need to keep that umbrella not only tomorrow, but probably into Wednesday as well. A prolonged period of rain, not 24 seven necessarily, but we are talking about a good deal of rain moving through in waves, probably going anywhere from an inch to two more widespread 
and then isolated pockets of two to three, if not more. Flooding is going to be the biggest issue. As I say, this is not a setup for wind or hail or tornado threat. It's more going to be a hydrological event, as we call it, in meteorological circles. In other words, that just means high water rising. Here's our city view camera. Flat clouds blotting out the sun, keeping the temperature down below normal for this time of year. Air quality is good in spite of that. 65 is the current temperature, partly cloudy skies, with an east to southeast wind at 13 with a gust of 23 miles per hour. Not a bad afternoon to get out, but as mentioned, although the sky looks relatively th uh, threatening, we are going to stay dry. 64 degrees in Odessa, 63 in Mary uh, Marshall, that is, out in the Lawrence, 66 degrees, where those clouds are starting to increase. There was a little bit of rain showing up on the Topeka Weather Service radar, but that's not really making it much at all. The atmosphere is fairly dry. Farther down to the south, it's even mostly clear. We're going to be in and out of the clouds for the rest of the evening. Hour by hour breakdown for the evening through the overnight hours. Zero chance, at least through the evening commute. 8 p.m. will go to about a 20% chance. By 10 o'clock, we'll be at a 30% chance, but that's only the beginning of a rain event that will be lasting for a while. Here's a look at First Alert Future Scan, present time. Notice how the clouds are starting to be in and out. This is now about 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock at night. Rain showers and a couple of thunderstorms a possibility. That'll be south and west of Lawrence, closer to Ottawa, out toward Garnett on the Kansas side. That moves through during the early morning hours, so don't be surprised if you hear a couple rumbles of thunder or hear the pitter-patter of the rain falling against your window. This is now 5.45 in the morning. Looks like a good bet for most of us getting wet during the morning hours. Again, nothing severe, but still, it'll slow you down with hydroplaning. This is going to be about 2.45 in the afternoon on Thursday. Still some rain showers moving through and a few more bands even by Tuesday evening. So we're really not going to shake the rain out of our umbrellas anytime soon until probably sometime on Wednesday. And that's when we're going to see things finally start to clear out. Looking at the exclusive first alert nine day forecast. Once again, your high temperature below average at 66, 52 to 62 degrees on Tuesday, which is a impact day because of that heavy rain and a couple of thunderstorms as well. On Wednesday, 53 to 63 degrees, rain showers ending Thursday drying out. Friday heading into the Memorial Day weekend, starting to feel steamy once again with temperatures in the 80s for the rest of that time period and actually fairly dry. And morning temperatures also getting warmer back into the 60s. Jamie. <laughs> A familiar sound will fill the air around Union Station this weekend. Celebration at the station is back. We're going to give you a rundown of the schedule so you can start making your plans. And the king of the box office continues to reign supreme. How much Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness has made over its three-week streak at the top.
A Memorial Day tradition is coming back to Kansas City for the first time in three years. This music just gets you in a great mood. Celebration at the station is this Sunday at Union Station. Things kick off at 5 o'clock that night with food trucks and different vendors. The Kansas City Symphony will take the stage at 8 o'clock. It is free to go to. Just make sure you bring a blanket or a long chair in order to enjoy the performance. And don't forget, you can catch out a replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial at the National World War I Museum. This 400-foot wall is on display at the Memorial Southeast Lawn through Memorial Day. You can visit it anytime for free except Sunday from 7 to 11 because that's the celebration at the station we just mentioned. For the third week in a row, the top spot of the box office went to a Marvel movie. Doctor Strange still reigns supreme in the theaters. You break the rules and become a hero. I do it and I become the enemy. This doesn't seem fair. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness earned $31.6 million oh, in its third week. This brings its domestic box office total to $342 million. Down Abbey, A New Era came in second, while the bad guys finished in third. A challenger for Doctor Strange flies into theaters this weekend. Top Gun Maverick hits theaters on Thursday. Union Station is going to be hosting a special event on Thursday tied to the movie. There will be a sold out meet and greet featuring a Top Gun instructor and Olathe East High School grad Jesse Reed. Reed gave us a sneak peek at some of the items that are going to be out on display. Tickets for Top Gun Maverick on Union Station's extreme screen can be purchased right now on Union Station's website. The clock is ticking on the Parade of Hearts in Lee Summit. The artwork titled Downtown Time can be found outside of the train station on Southwest Main Street. The artist wanted to depict different areas of Lee Summit that have been recently revitalized. Her goal is to show how repurposing old buildings protects our history while benefiting the community. Just a reminder that KMBC 9 and KCWE 29 are proud to sponsor the Parade of Hearts, which runs through the end of this month. And here's a beautiful addition to the Braid of Hearts in Kansas City, Kansas. This unique artwork is titled Kansas City Riverview. It's on display at Huron Park in 6th and Ann Ave. The artist hopes her heart reminds you of the history of our area and how it played a major role in westward expansion. This heart and all of the others in this public art project will be up for auction in June. A change starts today for Johnson County kids. Booster shots are cleared for some of the youngest residents where you can take your child today for a third dose.
committed to serving the residents of Kansas and Missouri. KNBC 9 News, leading the way. Thanks for sticking with us at noon. I'm Jamie Weiss. Chief Meteorologist Brian Busby has your first alert forecast. And Brian, it's a beautiful afternoon, but mm -hmm. you say rain is on the way. Rain is on the way, but not this evening. So the evening drive will be fine. Any activities you have this evening will be okay. Heading into the overnight hours, that's where we're going to see our chances of rain increase. These temperatures are still running a little below normal for this time of year. 65 Smithville, Excelsior Springs, 64, 64 in Grandview as well as Gardner. Winds are primarily out of the east and southeast. You don't warm up on a wind direction like that. Looking a little wider, 64 also down to the south toward Ottawa. Garnett at 63 degrees, Sedalia at 62. And still 50s and 60s over us. Rain cooled air out to the west where the clouds are a little thicker. That's where we see those rain chances increasing. But as I mentioned, this is still several hours away. So instead of being a wet evening, I think it'll be an overnight into the first portion of Tuesday as the system moves out in waves. And once it starts, it'll probably be around for most of the daytime hours on your Tuesday and even into Wednesday as well. Back edge not moving through until that time. For the rest of this afternoon, partly cloudy, cooler than normal in the 60s. with The east wind at 10 to 15 miles an hour, up to 20 every once in a while. Overnight tonight, during the overnight hours, that's when we're going to see our chances of rain really increase. So I'm talking about zero for the rest of the day. Tuesday, though, a 100% guarantee sometime during the course of the 24 hours, you're going to run into that rain. Then it tapers off on Wednesday. High temperature then will be back into the 60s as well. But the rain chances will be back to a 40% shot by then. The rest of the work week looks pretty dry heading into Memorial Day as well. I'll spell it all out for you in the nine day forecast coming up in a few minutes. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Brian. Health experts are warning another COVID wave could be here as new cases rise in almost every state. The CDC is reporting more than 100,000 new cases every day. And on top of that, COVID related hospitalizations have risen about 24% from the previous week. Health experts say this latest surge is due in part to new variants and subvariants, some of which are increasingly contagious, and that masks and vaccinations are still the key to stopping the spread. On the vaccine front, Pfizer says its vaccine series for kids under the age of five is highly effective. The company plans to submit data to regulators later this week. The series is made up of three shots. Pfizer originally wanted kids to get vaccinated with just two doses, but they discovered months ago their two shot series didn't give the protection that they hoped it would. The company says three doses give about 80% protection against symptomatic COVID-19. Happening today, the Johnson County, Kansas Health Department will be offering booster shots to kids as young as five. The CDC endorsed those shots late last week. KBC 9's Martin Augustine is in mission to break it all down. Coming to you from the northeast offices of Johnson County, Kansas, 6000 Lamar in Mission, where a walk-in clinic will open up this morning to administer those booster shots, now authorized for children ages 5 to 11 who've completed their primary vaccination series at least five months ago. Now, this is all key as COVID-19 cases, especially the Omicron variant, are rising again in Johnson County at a rate not seen since the middle of February. In addition to the CDC, the Kansas Department of Health and Environment has also endorsed these booster boosters. The walk-in clinic here on Lamar open from 8 until 5. There's also a walk-in clinic at the Johnson County Health Department's Olathe office from 8 until 4. These shots will also be available at your doctor's office and pharmacies too. Reporting from Mission, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. hy V stores are also giving out free pediatric COVID boosters. The same rules apply. Kids have to be at least five months removed from their last dose. And if your child's immunocompromised, they only have to wait three months. I've tweeted out a link if you'd like to make an appointment. Tonight, you can have a say on the future of the Kansas City Public School District. The district will be hosting a community chat about Blueprint 2030, which is the plan for students' futures in KCPS. This will be held at J.A. Rogers Elementary on 23rd Street, east of Topping Ave. It starts at 6 o'clock tonight. Food and child care will be provided. There will also be a session in Spanish. It's scheduled for tomorrow at 6 o'clock. This is at the Carver Dual Language School at 46th and Elmwood Avenue. It is graduation week for the Lawrence School District. Free State High School will have their ceremony tomorrow, while Lawrence High School grads will walk on Wednesday. Both of those ceremonies are scheduled for 7 o'clock at the school's football stadium. Olathe East graduates walk the stage Sunday after a school year full of ups and downs. Thank you! These students graduated less than three months after an assistant principal and school resource officer were hurt in a school shooting. Yesterday, the graduates focused on celebrating their accomplishments and the hardships they overcame.
It just made it a super special moment because we were all able to bond with each other and then find new ways to meet new people and just, it was just really special. A huge sigh of relief. I'm very excited to be finished with high school and I'm excited to move on to college. Here's a special note for the graduating class of 2022. They graduated on the 22nd of May at 2.22 p.m. Very cool fact there. The accused Aletha E. shooter Jalon Elmore is now in the Johnson County Jail after spending several months in the hospital recovering from the injuries he got that day. His next court date is set for June 8th. This weekend is Memorial Day and millions of Americans are planning to hit the road. But one obstacle for those traveling are spiking gas prices. ABC's Gio Benitez has tips on how to make sure you're saving money and not wasting it. Just a week away from the unofficial start of the summer, Memorial Day weekend is gearing up to be one of the busiest since the pandemic began. AAA says more than 34 million people will hit the roads over the upcoming holiday, nearing pre-pandemic levels. Major arteries going in and out of some of the larger cities uh, are really going to be the ones that, are, that have the most traffic. And I think what you want to do is avoid the peak times, which are in the middle of the afternoon. With gas prices soaring over $4 a gallon in most states, experts say it's important to have your car serviced. It could end up saving you some cash. If your tire pressures are, are slightly underinflated, you could lose about 5% of, of your gas mileage. And if you're renting a car, expect prices to be high. Online travel booking platform Hopper says rentals over the holiday are averaging $61 a day. If you haven't booked your rental car yet, um, you might want to check out some of the smaller airports where you might be able to get more availability and better deals. You could potentially save money by going electric. While the cost to rent an EV can be higher than a gas car, you may save money by skipping the pump. Well, let's take a look at the gas prices right now on both sides of the state line. According to AAA in Kansas, the average is $4.04 .04 a gallon. That's up six cents from last week. In Missouri, it's $4.15 a gallon, which is up 10 cents from just a week ago. Hearing loss is a problem all of us want to try to avoid. Coming up in our next Consumer Reports, we take a look at how you can take steps now to preserve the hearing we have down the road. Pleasant, light breeze, not much humidity, and few clouds out there. 60s for the most part, not necessarily needing a jacket, but you see those 60s heading down I-35 on the Kansas side, also going up I-35 on the Missouri side too. 
Liberty, 63 degrees. And then on the Missouri side as well, out in Jackson County, low to middle 60s. That's about what everybody has. Very few 50s are being seen, and I don't anticipate us cooling down much at all because of the clouds moving in, in spite of that wind coming in from the east and southeast. Most of the Midwest is dry for the time being, cooler out to the west because of those rain showers that'll be moving through. More on your timeline using First Alert Future Scan coming up. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Brian. Mm -hmm. Whether it's listening to music too loud or using power tools without proper protection, most of us will experience hearing loss as we get older. There are steps that we can take right now to preserve the hearing we have. KMBC 9's Donna Pittman and Consumer Reports show us how. Chris Martin, Will I Am, and The Who's Pete Townsend are just some of the many musicians suffering from hearing damage after years of exposure to loud music. But you don't have to be a rock star to lose your hearing. People of all age are vulnerable, and audiologists say it's important to understand the causes. Hearing isn't damaged just by a high-level sound. It's damaged by high-level sound over a period of time. Like some things we do over and over throughout our lives. For example, just 15 minutes at one football game in a stadium may cause hearing damage. And just five minutes from a very loud TV or from music turned up all the way on your iPhone with standard earbuds on. So if you attend games and concerts often or crank up your iPhone volume daily, your risk for hearing loss increases. Consumer Reports says one trick is to minimize the intensity of noises around you. Use noise canceling headphones that shut out background clamor so you can keep volume at a low level. If you operate a lawnmower or power tools regularly, wear earmuffs or earplugs like these that reduce noise back down to normal conversation level. I have to speak really, really loudly to be heard by somebody next to me. Have to use hearing protection in those instances. And did you know many TVs have an automatic turn down function during commercials and loud action packed sequences? <laughs> Typically found in the assistive features in your TV sound settings, they may be called auto volume or dynamic range protection. If you think you may have hearing loss, consider getting tested. The earlier you get hearing help, the better. Consumer Report says don't discount a healthy lifestyle. Cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and other conditions may factor into hearing loss. So eating well and exercising can help. Donna Pittman, KMBC 9 News. The latest attacks in Ukraine hit an apartment building, leaving behind only rubble in some areas. A bit of promising news, border crossings could soon be much easier with a neighboring country. We'll explain the new agreement. The CDC is tracking a virus slowly moving into the U.S. This one is called monkeypox. The latest advice from President Biden on how to handle this recent concern. And we do have a recall alert this afternoon that's something that could be in your kitchen right now. Thousands of jars of Jif peanut butter have been linked to a salmonella outbreak. One person from Missouri has gotten sick so far. We're going to show you what the numbers look like on your jar.
new video from the war in Ukraine showing the latest Russian missile strikes hurting seven people, including an 11 year old girl in the city of Lozova. The Ukrainian president's office says this building was just recently renovated and people were hiding out there for safety. In his nightly address to the country, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky outlined the start of a new relationship with Poland, where millions of Ukrainians have found refuge. He says the border crossing stations will move much faster, something he's calling a truly historic process. It will remove most of the corruption risks, but it is also the beginning of our integration into the common custom space of the European Union. This is a truly historical process. Refugees have spread out all across Europe because of the attacks like these on regular apartment buildings. Well, there are new fears that the global monkeypox outbreak has nearly 200 cases have been confirmed in the countries where the virus isn't normally found. Now dozens more are suspected. ABC's Elwin Lopez has more. Florida becoming the third state to detect a potential case of monkeypox as cases continue to spread across the globe. President Biden saying he doesn't foresee the country enacting the same 21-day quarantine rules implemented in Belgium for people who contract the virus. We have vaccines to care for, to take care of it. The president clarifying statements made yesterday, calling the virus a major concern. I just don't think it rises to the level of the kind of concern that existed with COVID-19, but I think people should be careful. There are reportedly more than 190 confirmed or suspected cases in at least 16 countries. The White House COVID-19 response coordinator says more are likely to follow. I would not be surprised if we see a few more cases in the upcoming days. Anytime we have an infectious disease outbreak like this, we should all be paying attention. The rare virus is related to smallpox, and at first, the symptoms may resemble those of the flu. But monkeypox can also cause telltale blisters like these. Experts say those at higher risk of severe disease are pregnant women. We know how to treat this if people get really seriously ill. Um, for example, we have an antiviral that has activity. We have, uh, you know, antibodies that can be deployed if needed. Number three, we have a vaccine that we can uh, use in the general population. The fatality risk of monkeypox is low. Symptoms which include fever, swollen lymph nodes and lesions usually last between 14 and 21 days. Well, travelers have had to deal with major delays when it comes to the security line. This was at KCI yesterday. The TSA says the backup was caused by a prohibited item. They didn't say what it was, but they tell us when agents discovered it, they had to close an entire checkpoint lane in Terminal C. It was back open later in the day, but some travelers tell us they waited more than three hours to get through security. The TSA says there have also been staffing issues, but that didn't directly play a role in Sunday's delay. Agents are warning travelers that there could be longer lines through security in the near future with summer travel returning to pre pandemic levels. We do have a recall alert from the CDC. Check your peanut butter. GIF brand peanut butter is linked to a salmonella outbreak in 12 states. 14 people have gotten sick, including one person in Missouri. Two people are in the hospital. The CDC says the recall includes many types and sizes, including creamy, crunchy, natural, and even reduced fat peanut butter. Be sure to check the lot numbers here on your screen. If you have peanut butter with that lot number, just throw it away. A book written by a Kansas City native and published by Mid-Continent Public Library is hitting the shelves today. Travel North Black Girl is a memoir written by Olivia Hill. It's all about her and her husband's journey from Kansas City to start a new life in an Alaskan village in the 1980s. It's got drama, adventure and comedy. So if you'd like to learn more, Hill's going to be at the MCPL Story Center tonight at 630 to talk all about writing that novel. You can sign up by heading to the mymcpl.org website. Starting tomorrow, a new kind of landscaper is going to be on the job in Lenexa. Goats are going to be clearing invasive plants at Sarko Park Trails Park. And this is video of the herd from last year. When the city hired them, well, clearly they did a good job because they're back. The animals can easily move around the creek terrain along 87th Street Parkway to clear out the plants. You can see these goats in the park for a couple of weeks. Something to look forward to there. The Kansas City Royals ended the weekend series with the Twins on a low note. The boys in blue looked to have the game in hand, but it didn't happen. The Royals had a six run lead heading into the eighth inning. Royals pitching struggled as they gave up five runs in the eighth and two runs in the ninth to blow the lead. The Royals lose seven to six. After the game, manager Mike Matheny called it a frustrating loss. 
can't think of a, a worse loss than that one right there. All season, picking each other up. If one of them has a bad day, somebody else is able to pick them up. And uh, it was unfortunate today because they've been good for us. We worked them hard. Um, but that one stings. Well, next, the Royals will head to the desert in search of a win. Zach Greinke will be on the mound against the Arizona Diamondbacks. First pitch set for 845 tonight. So, Brian, we don't have to look forward to a game here at home. Instead, mm. we get to look forward to rain. How yeah. about that? Well, I guess it matches the tears because of that unfortunate loss we had yesterday or thereabouts. And now looking ahead, though, Jamie, things are going to stay wet for a little bit longer, but they will improve heading into the Memorial Day weekend. I know a lot of folks have plans for that. And some of us could get quite a bit of rain anywhere from an inch to two widespread. Very few of us will get less than an inch, believe it or not, because of the prolonged event we're talking between, say, now and Wednesday when it ends. So that's why it's an impact day tomorrow. And then on the max, two to three inches of rainfall possible. Flooding is going to be the biggest concern. City View Camera, as mentioned, not a bad evening. So if you didn't get a chance to dine outside for lunch, you can do it at dinner time and still be all right from the rain. 65 degrees, partly cloudy skies. An east to southeast wind at 13 with a gust of 23 miles an hour. Air quality is looking good. Humidity 42%. That's too low to sustain any sort of rainfall. Hence that forecast for a dry evening. But overnight, that's when we'll start to see it pick up. 60s. For example, 66 degrees in Hiawatha, 63 Trenton, 63 in Butler, 63 degrees in Lee's Summit, and looking at Odessa, 65 degrees, and down toward Garnett, also those 60s. Back to the sunshine, so you're going to warm up pretty rapidly. Looking farther to the west of Lawrence, that's where you see the thicker clouds. But as far as anything that's showing up as rain, notice how it was there earlier, and maybe not even hitting the ground, but showing up on the Topeka's Weather Service radar, and then just cloudy skies moving back into northwest Missouri, northeast Kansas. Our, our breakdown is going to have goose eggs. Zero chance for this evening. Evening commute looks fine, 65 degrees. By 8 o'clock, a stray shower or two possibility. By 10 o'clock, it betters to about a 30% chance. And then the heavy stuff moves through later on tonight. Here it is on first look future scan showing you that stopping it at 10. That's why we only say about a 20 or 30% shot. But look what happens between midnight and 5 in the morning. A lot of oranges and yellows. That's on the heavier side of our legend there. That wave moves out, being replaced by another one for the lunchtime tomorrow, which won't be good for outdoor dining. And then the evening drive looks like it could be wet as well. And that's why I say some of us could pick up an inch or two easy, some of us more than that. Impact day on your Tuesday, but today 66 degrees, cooling down to only 62 on Tuesday, a morning temperature of 52 degrees. Wednesday will start to dry out from any of that rain, a couple of thunderstorms as well. 53 to 63 degrees, 72 on Thursday. Friday to start the Memorial Day weekend off, it gets back into the 80s for a high. Gets steamy as well. Saturday and Sunday right now looking dry, but Memorial Day itself a high of 83. That's above normal. And morning temperatures also a little above normal as well. We should be at 57. We'll be 10 better than that. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Brian. Coming up tonight on Channel 9, it's the NBA Playoffs Eastern Conference Finals at 7 between the Miami Heat and Boston Celtics. Miami leads the series two games to one. Be sure to stick around for KBC 9 News at 10. And on KCWE, it's a night of season finales, starting with All-American at 7, All-American Homecoming at 8, and of course, KBC 9 News at 9.
Another check of your nine day forecast here shows 66 our normal high temperature 77 impact day tomorrow because of several periods of rain and thunderstorms. Not a severe weather event, but still going to be talking about that. And Wednesday we start to dry out. Another update using first alert future scan coming up tonight on KBC 9 News at 4 o'clock. Join me then.